Hey, what's up, peoples? Hard Like Joe here with the profile for my Melfi Brigade deck, a build that seeks to pair the adorably cute and cuddly Melfi archetype with some gun wielding Tri Brigade protectors. Of course, I should note at the time of recording, none of these OCG cards are out in America, so their final TCG names might be something completely different from what's written here. As such, I'll mostly be referring to them by my own made up names. For example, this guy is Mufasa, and this I'm calling Bojack Gunman. We're also playing three Rescue Kitty, a Garnet Miner, three Bull Rockets, three Little Serbs, three Bambi, some Big Hairy Beavers, three Pants Rabbit, three Very Good Puppers, two Death Rabbits, two Itty Bitty Pretty Kitty, one Foxy, one Plague Knight, some Ash Insurance, some Dragoon Insurance, a way to search Bojack in Melfi Hide and Seek. Our extra deck consists of two Harvey Birdman, Attorney at Gun, a level 6 Synchro, The Beast, The King in Yellow, my buddy Harold, Exiton Knight 2, Melfi Lunch, The Great Raccoon of Justice, Rabbi is up on that stump again, Axe Wolf Bunny Blast, insert generic link 2 here, a firefighter apparently, and the winner of this year's Miss Radiant pageant. The side deck I'll go over right now, because it's mostly made of alternative options for this deck, and people in the comments are going to yell at me for not main decking some of them. In particular, Obedient School is one of the best cards you can play in most Melfi decks, but I'm not playing it here because it locks you into just beasts, and the strongest boards this deck can muster involve summoning this badass motherfucker, who is decidedly not a beast, but a winged beast, which is, which is very different. Uh, likewise, there's this card that searches tri brigade stuff, but it's a continuous spell that prevents you from summoning anything except Beast, Wing Beast, and Beast Warrior, and this deck likes to summon stuff like Herald, which is none of those things. There's also several searchable Melfi cards in here, we've got this Monster Reborn for Beasts and a tri brigade Recovery Trap, all of which are mostly good in the grind game, which this deck tries to avoid by focusing on powerful go for stun and OTK follow-ups. You certainly could include them if you want, but they're just going to make your openings slightly weaker. Speaking of openings, let's get into how to actually play this deck. As the name implies, it has two distinct parts. The Tri Brigade, so named because they are a brigade of monsters that support a triad of types, those being Beast, Beast Warrior, and Wing Beast, along with Melfi, which are beasts and also adorable. The Tri Guys are more important though, so I'm starting with them. They have three main deck monsters, which together form a neat little engine. Bojack's effect is long, but basically, you can discard him in order to send any monster in this deck to the graveyard. Most of the time, you'll be sending this spooky bird looking fellow, because if it's sent to the graveyard, you can search any monster from its archetype. Usually, you'll want to search Bull Rocket, whom you can summon from your hand by discarding any Beast, Beast Warrior, or Winged Beast. Once on the field, Bullman can summon a Link Monster by banishing the materials from your graveyard. Actually, all the Tri Brigades can do this in addition to their other effects, but you usually want this guy to do it because you can get him on the field without using your normal summon. I should note, however, you can only summon Link monsters that are Beast, Beast Warrior, or Wing Beast, and the monsters you banish for that summon must also be Beast, Beast Warrior, or Wing Beast. Ooh, you know, that really is a mouthful, saying all three types every time, so I'm just gonna call them the Tri-Types from now on. So just know that if I say a Tri-Type monster, I mean any of the types that have Beast in their name. Anyway, banish any number of Tri-Type monsters to summon a Tri-Type of the same Link rating. Assuming you started with Bojack, you should have him, the bird, and whatever you discarded for Bull, giving you enough material to make the Link 3, which together you can combine with this to make the Link 4. This guy is the boss monster of the deck. Once per turn, if it's summoned, or if a Tri-Type monster is summoned, you can just banish a card on the field, no targeting required. It also has 3,000 attack and searches when it's destroyed, which is nice and all, but the banishment is what makes it so strong. The whole crux of this deck is to get this thing out and trigger its effect as often as possible. This is where the Melfis come into play. All the Melfi monsters share the same effect, which is, at the end of your turn, you can special summon them from your hand, then, if your opponent summons a monster or tries to attack them, they bounce back to your hand and do something on the way. 
Caddy searches a beast from the deck, Fenny summons a beast from the hand, and Puppy summons a beast from the deck. So basically, you summon this big armored bird man with a grenade launcher, and then his pet puppy just comes running out to play. And as soon as your opponent summons anything, the puppy gets scared, runs back into your hand yelping, a concerned friend pops out of the deck to see what's up, and Birdman just completely loses his shit and banishes your opponent's monster to the depths of hell. And that's just the start of your interactions, because you see, Puppy can summon Kalantosa, a level 2 beast that targets and destroys a card when it's summoned by a beast monster. If you have Kitty as well, it can hop back to the hand in order to search Hop-Eared Flying Squadron, a level 2 beast tuner that has the effect to summon itself during the opponent's turn, and then Synchro Summon with a monster you control. Since almost everything in here is a level 2 monster, you can use Hoppy with whatever you happen to have, maybe a Kalantosa that just used its effect, hint hint, and use them to summon Herald of the Arclight, which can tribute itself on the field to negate a spell, trap, or monster effect. Uh, by the way, this thing's effect will also trigger Birdman if you haven't already used it, which is why we played at 3. If you don't open with Puppy, but you can end on a Link 4 plus any level 2, this still gets you the Banish while going into Arclight. While I'm in the extra deck, it's also worth mentioning this thing, Melfi of the Forest. This rank 2 Ixie can be made with any two level 2 monsters, and has two effects. First, it can detach to search any Melfi card, usually Puppy if you don't already have one, or Kitty if you do. A second, while it's on the field, if a Melfi returns to your hand, you can target a monster your opponent controls, and permanently negate its effects, as well as its ability to attack. This may not seem like much, but remember that we can make the Link 4 and summon all these Melfies without ever using our normal summon, so making this in addition to those is pretty easy. We've got Nimble Beaver, a level 2 that summons a copy of itself out of the deck when it's normal summoned, Valerophon that can discard a card to summon a beast from the graveyard, and Rescue Cat which can summon two level 3 or lower beasts from the deck with their effects negated. Any one of these can allow you to make a first turn Ixie summon, which will not only search the Melfi you need to trigger Birdman, but also give you additional negates as well. With a decent starting hand like Bojack, Rescue Cat, Puppy, and any monster to discard, you could easily end on one Banish, one Pop, one Monster Negate, and one Omni Negate. And all these combo pieces are replaceable with other stuff in the deck. Don't open with Rescue Cat, Nimble Beaver, and Bambi do the same thing. Opening with Tenki is essentially the same as opening with Bojack, and whatever Melfi you open with, you can always just search the other one. Unless you open with Fenny, but we'll get to that. Regardless of how you do it, that should be enough interaction to stop your opponent from playing for a turn, at which point you can usually follow it up with an OTK using things like Ronin Raccoon and the other Tri Brigade links. And even if you can't OTK, most of your plays are repeatable. Your Melfis will be in hand to summon again, you have multiple Kalantosas, which you can also recycle with the searchable Melfi spell, and if you lose Birdman, it's not too hard to summon another one with any of the Tri Brigade monsters. And that's pretty much the deck in a nutshell. Everything else in here is just a tech card, the most useful of which is probably Mine Mole, assuming it doesn't show up in your hand which he often does. This is a level 3 beast that lets you draw a card if it's used as synchro material for a beast type monster. If you open with Rescue Cat, you can summon this and Valerophon, which is a tuner by the way, and go into Naturia Beast while drawing a card in the process. You don't always want to do this. Sometimes you need to go for your rank 2 and search a puppy so you have some way to trigger Birdman. But if you've already got a puppy or a hop eared squadron, or you didn't open with any of your tri brigade stuff, then ending on infinite spell negates is probably a good idea. Especially since making it might draw you into the missing thing you need. A second best tech is probably Mufasa, who is an absolute beast going second. Uh, full pun intended. If your opponent's combined monsters have more attack than your combined monsters, you can special summon this for free. Then, once per turn, it can target any number of tri-type monsters, including itself that you control, return them to the hand, and then non-targetingly return the same number of monsters to your opponent's hand. Uh, you can't attack directly with Mufasa the turn you use this effect, but if your opponent still has monsters on the field, you can summon this thing again and attack them for 3,000, which makes it pretty damn useful at breaking boards, even in decks that don't play any other beast types. 
We're a dedicated go first strategy, so I only play one and search it with Caddy when we need it. But there's two more in the side deck, which I would strongly recommend citing if you know you're going second. As for our remaining monsters, we play the one Fenny because it's a searchable card that can trigger Birdman and get a Kalantosa out of your hand if you happen to draw it. If you want to play Pony as well, you can. It's the only remaining Melfi monster we're not playing. Together, it and Fenny can create this loop with Kalantosa since this adds back from the graveyard to the hand and this summons from the hand. We usually close out games before we get to that kind of setup though, so I didn't think it was necessary. Uh, Tenki, in addition to searching Bojack, has some synergy with Forbidden Droplet. This is a quick play that lets you send cards from your hand or field to the grave in order to negate and shrink the same number of monsters your opponent controls. Not only is this great for dealing with stuff like Dragoon since it doesn't target, but you can send Tenki from your field as cost, along with any other cards you might want to discard from your hand like Kalantosa or Plague Bird. Unfortunately, this doesn't trigger our Fabled monster, but many of our other effects do. This is a level 2 beast tuner that summons itself from the grave if it's discarded, which makes it a great extender. Rocket Bull discards to summon itself, and Valerifon discards to summon from the grave, which allows you to get double value out of those. Like, yeah, let me show you something real quick. Say you have the opening I mentioned before, Bojack, Rescue, and either one of the Melfies. But the extra beast that you have to discard is the Fabled. Then, you don't have to choose between Naturia Beast and the Ixie, you can make both meaning you end on one Banish, one Pop, one Monster Negate, one Omni Negate, Infinite Spell Negates, plus whatever you happen to draw with Mind Mole. Oh, and this was done using four cards, so you'll have an additional spare card as well. It's honestly pretty sweet, so long as you don't get hit by Nibiru, which we have no defense from. All that leaves then with is the remaining extra deck cards, which isn't too complicated. We play an additional level 4 synchro and a level 6 synchro in case the game gets grindy. You could just as easily turn these into multiple heralds if you wanted to get a little less spicy. Uh, Melfi have another Ixy with 2000 attack that can detach to attack directly, which can sometimes help close out games as long as you remember that it has that effect. There are some generic links here, including a beast and a beast warrior. You can summon them with the tri brigades if needed. And finally, there's this behemoth, which is just nutty. It's a rank 12, but it can be summoned on top of any Ixie you control that attacked this turn. In addition to having three stacks both ways, it can detach two materials as a quick effect to send all other cards on the field to the graveyard. If, say, just for example, my opponent makes something like Dragoon, oftentimes I'll bait out the negation with something and then summon Ronin Raccoon. This can detach to make a token that has equal attack to the highest attack monster on the field, letting you crash it into whatever your opponent has. From there, you can usually attack with Raccoon for a thousand before transforming it into Super Saiyan God mech form to lock out future attempts at disobedience. It's pretty cool. Anyway, that's about it for the deck. I've got some other extra deck monsters in the side, which you might want to consider for some niche matchups. Or in the case of this thing, you'll want to include it if it ever comes out in America. But we've been here long enough, so I'll leave it up to you to read them. For now, this is where I'll take my leave. Like the video if you liked it, subscribe if you want more strange deck profiles, and ring the bell if you want to be notified as soon as they come out. Thanks for watching, and until next time, good luck, and have fun.